Good morning guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Matt Strong, for those that don't know me. Uh, I uh, make flashlights, yeah. So this is my shop. I've got my uh, soldering iron set up. It's not turned on yet. Just get my first cup of coffee in. This is totally not rehearsed guys. Um, today I want to um, I want to show you guys how I build a Convoy C8. There's a lot of, uh, lot of new guys getting into building flashlights. And it's pretty exciting stuff seeing a lot of new new things coming to the market um it's awesome uh i just want to give you guys a rundown of how i've been doing this you know i'm not going to pad my numbers and tell you guys i'm selling 500 lights a year and i you know blah 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 so it's not like that but i have sent out quite a few lights uh you know built and sold lights for a few years now and i very rarely do i ever get one come back and you know uh, i don't it's like nine times out of ten it's something that wasn't my fault somebody sticks two batteries and a light designed for one battery that's not my fault um so anyways guys uh let me show you guys how i do this and you can take it with a grain of salt you know you can uh, do what i do or you can do what you do i don't i do you me you do you it's all good but this is how i do it uh, this light here was donated to me by michael fine for a purpose so it'll be uh, a giveaway light here in the near future um this is a brand new Convoy C8 host. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get these lights and they do get a little ding in them. That's not, that's just how they come from the factory, guys. It's a cheap light, um, which we're going to turn into a pretty awesome light here soon. Uh, this is just a stock Convoy, uh, whatever emitter they come with. And uh, 7135 driver. You got the uh, the tail cap switch here and the tail cap. And like I said, this is not rehearsed. Uh, I think we will go with, um, let's see. Yeah, let's go with uh, Guppy 3, or Guppy 2 DRV firmware on this uh, MTN 17 DD. It's a 7135 FET driver. So basically, uh, right. Right there you got your FET and that that's pretty much an on-off switch so you know when the FET is full power it's just turned on constant so all the power that can flow from the battery will flow you know depending on the resistance and the circuitry and the LED and then you got your 7135 driver that controls your uh, lower mode output levels and your MCU you got your diodes and resistors and stuff um, yeah so these are pretty awesome drivers been using them for a while uh, this is a brand new one and uh, we'll go with that driver uh, I'm, I, I'm going with the guppy 2 dual DRV just because uh, this is a C8 there's a little more mass in this heat sinking in here which we'll get into um, you don't really need the better thermal regulation you get with the guppy 3 DRV for this kind of a light so it, it one LED doesn't really get as hot, you know, blah blah blah. There's all kinds of things to consider when you put together a flashlight, but that's my train of thought part of it. Um my personal favorite for the C eights. So yeah, sorry guys, let me slow down. These screws right here, one two opposite of each other. We gotta get those out. And then we'll have to unsolder these two wires right here in order to get the PCB out MC PCB with the LED on it and uh, the driver it's uh let's see what we can do there's a retaining ring right there I'll show it to you when I get it out of there yeah there we go sometimes these are a major pain to get out and I tell you what um, there's occasions where my little tool doesn't do a very good job and this retaining ring is the one shining example of that where the holes drilled in it are small so you just get you a nail I always keep a nail laying around guys always or two and that that really just does the trick and if you can't get it loose uh, you grab your second nail which is always laying around this is not rehearsed I promise <laughs> Uh, we're probably going to run into some issues here. I mean, I'll be fighting it. But yeah, so you just do that. Put one nail on each side, cross them up, and twist it loose, you know, if you have issues. That's, you know, trade secret, guys. Don't tell nobody I told you that. 
Wink, wink, nod, nod. All right, let's uh, flip on our soldering station here and uh, get a cup of coffee here. Get a sip of coffee while we wait on that to warm up. So at 100 degrees. Hundred mm. Breakfast of champions right there, boys. Love it. Got that hazelnut today. Mm. Love it. All right, two seventy-five. We're getting up there. Getting up there. Getting up there. It's almost there. I believe I told you wrong. I said there's a heat sink in these. There's not actually a heat sink in this one. Some of them, they're, this one has an integral shelf that the LED just sets on, which is cool. I mean, you know, it just, it does a job. So, all right, 351 degrees. Now we, uh, this is just a uh, trade secret here, guys. Water is key. Water is the key. What I found, and it doesn't matter, guys. I you see me using this soldering iron, it's just because it nowadays it makes it easier to just switch it on and go. And whereas, if you got one of those 25 35 watt heaters from the dollar store or something, you know, it's uh they work, they work fine. I used one for a long time, they work great. Uh, but uh, this one just makes things more convenient for me these days where I do a little bit more work, <laughs> so it's not just a one off thing every time. Anyways, we got to pop those wires off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys everything. Like, I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to make it buttery smooth. I'm going to show you guys all my problems and uh, anything I run into. Alright, so the driver's right there. It's a... Uh, Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seventy-one, thirty-five by eight driver. Just a cheap thing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much cheaper they can really make them. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, we'll toss that in the trash and uh, move on. Justin Arney mentioned me in a comment and flashlight trader. Cool story, bro. I'll check it out in a few. So there we go. We've got the, uh, the host here. Get your tweezers. Wiggle that loose. Yep, nasty stuff. It's awesome, though. I don't know. What LED is that? Uh, looks like a. Uh... Yeah, that's bad. That's not even a real. Well, there, I don't know what that is, guys. That's not even a real Cree LED. That's some kind of a knockoff. Like, they just they throw these things together as cheap as possible. And if they can do it cheaper, they will. That's ridiculous. I mean, you save yourself. A buck for the aluminum PCB or whatever and uh, you know who knows how much they probably saved them 10 cents a piece on them LEDs instead of using real Cree LEDs hard to tell guys hard to tell so anyways I don't want to set that down on my nice desk with all that nasty gunk on there hang on okay there we go I found a spot awesome 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 so first step would be cleaning and we use alcohol. That's what I use. You can use whatever you want. Rubbing alcohol. Don't waste the good stuff on this. And forgive me, guys. You gotta forgive me for my nails. I know. I know. I know. Okay. I woke up, you know, an hour, hour ago or so. I washed my hands in the bathroom five times. It wasn't good enough. I'm like, you know, I really want to do this video. Let me go ahead and get a shower. That still didn't help it much. So then I come out here to the garage, you know, and I'm like, well, maybe I should use this razor knife and try to dig that stuff out, out from under my nails. You know, there's not a day goes by, well, hardly any days go by, where I'm not polishing some copper, guys. And it's just working man's hands. There's no way. That stuff has to wear off. Literally, it has to wear off. 
So forgive me for having dirty fingernails I, I and dirty hands. See that crap? I, I cannot get rid of it. I've tried. Tried and tried and tried. So now we got the LED shelf all fresh and cleaned up there. Awesome. It's the LED shelf. It's the driver cavity. We're, we are about to pick out an LED and go ahead and put this thing back together. That is a... Let's see here. This is a... 20 millimeter yeah it's probably just a 20 millimeter it's, okay so let's find ourselves a uh, LED mounted to a 20 millimeter PCB I believe that should do it 5000K XPLHI I love those one of my favorites right there I love the 4000K XPLHIs too they're uh, pretty awesome LEDs and you can talk about color rendering all you want. I much prefer the extra output. It is noticeable. Very much so, in fact. Uh, I'm not going to nerd out on a homemade shoebox that gives you an arbitrary lumen number. Yeah, 20 millimeter PCB right there. We'll go ahead and use this one. Alrighty, where are we at? Okay, so a couple essentials you need, guys. I'm not, this isn't an all inclusive how to video. I'm not gonna make a list of what all you need, and there's so much information out there already, guys. I mean, come on, do some homework. If you're gonna do this, do it right. Do your homework, figure out what you need. You know, don't rely on just me. You know, find out how other people do stuff too. You know, it's common sense, guys. So this is um, Arctic Aluminum, no, 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 sorry, my bad, here, I got a fresh one here, I haven't even opened yet, uh, Ceramic 2 Trilinear Ceramic Thermal Compound by Arctic Silver, buy that stuff at uh, Mountain Electronics, mtnelectronics.com, that's where I get a lot of my supplies, uh, they sell good stuff, they're an uh, awesome website, he is an enabler, Richard over there, he's just an enabler, Alright, so another thing you need is some solder. This is what I use most of the time. Uh, sometimes if I'm doing soldering on, you know, like a driver component, if I'm trying to pop that MCU off of there, you know, to do whatever, change it out, you know, I'll use this thinner stuff that uh, works really well. I've got, this is a fresh one. I've got one that's already open, half gone in the drawer. Okay, so boom, trade secrets right here, guys. This is the key. This is what you need. You have to have this. Um, it's called flux. And you want this kind of flux. You do not. You do not want this. Okay. You don't want a pen. You don't want a flux pen. They're trash. They, they have their uses. They're great in some circumstances. They But for flashlights in general. Don't use it. They're, they're trash. They're not going to do as good of a job. Just not gonna happen, period. And yes, this is what you need. I mean, it's nasty, looks like crap, makes a mess. That's why we have the alcohol. But you have to have this stuff, guys. It's just, you really need it. it makes everything so much nicer and cleaner. And I just use a Q-tip, you know, get a little dab on there. So, uh, pre-tending our leads here, we just put a little dab on that contact pad, put a little dab over here. And, uh, yeah, I'll just throw a little bit here, a little bit here, and that's really all you need. And that stuff, it flux, it just, it cleans when it heats up. It'll clean all the nasty oxidation and dirt and whatnot off of whatever you're trying to solder as you're trying to solder it. And if you get the right stuff, guys, do it right. Get the good stuff. I know it makes a mess, but that's ideal. It's perfect stuff for this. Um, makes everything really nice. Okay, so I'm going to end up having to solder it, file down the edges of this. And I, um, I don't have my journal set up. Weird. Seems like I'm always using a can hand file that. Awesome. She's ready to go. That's all it is, guys. Just a little uh, diamond bit on there. So, yeah. You can hand file this. Um, I do that, that quite often. Usually when I'm building my custom lights that are press fit, I will knock off the big stuff with this and then go in with the hand file and, uh, you know, file it down to fit just perfect. 
nice smooth like that. I really hate to do this on my coffee. Give it extra flavor. You need a good pair of tweezers too. Uh, they really come in handy. I like these uh, longer surgical tweezers. Oh, I actually just got these in the other day. These are super sweet. Copper, what's up? I love it. These have serrated jaws on them where these are just smooth. Um, but yeah, I haven't even had a chance to use these. Maybe we will today. Love my tweezers. Um, and I got these for pretty cheap. Uh, they're, they're quality tools though. They are uh, these ones. This brand is pretty awesome. Okay, so basically, uh, sorry guys, let me fill you in here. I am feeding the wires, and it doesn't matter at this point, it doesn't matter which side's which, as long as you got the black and the red, one side through each. Boom, there we go. What I like to do is just kind of feed that up in there. Get my tweezers, pull the wires up a bit. Yep, okay, now, this is kind of key, okay? So, you have, you have to figure out at this point, you got to figure out which side's positive and negative. This has got plus and minus on there already, so that kind of makes it easy on us. What we're going to do is drop this down inside there. Line the wires up the way that they're supposed to be, right? Okay, this is the key part. When you get to solder this, you need to bend this, okay? You don't want to try to bend this as you're soldering or just hold it, force it in place and have stress on the wire. Go ahead and pre-kink this thing just a little bit. Just roll it over there like that in the direction of that pad so it's like a you know, 90 degree angle there instead of being straight up. Go ahead and kink that. You do yourself a favor. You do that on both sides. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Alrighty, so. Um, trying to figure out my work holding situation I got going on here. I might... We can probably get away with that, but, um, yeah. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta be comfortable. That's the key to anything, whether you're welding, soldering, you name it. You gotta be comfortable. Um, so you gotta figure out your work holding and how you're gonna move. You figure out your ergonomics. So basically, right now, I'm just pressing down on that PCB and just kind of giving it a little wiggle just to kind of squish out some of that uh, thermal compound that we put in there. Now, when you see it starting to flow out right here, you know you probably use just a fuzz too much. But, you know, a little bit's okay. If it's coming out all around there and stuff, you use way too much thermal compound. Take it off, clean it off, do it again. Because you don't need a whole lot. You see me just dabbing in there, and I forgot to mention that. Too much is too much. I mean, a lot of people say the bigger the job, the better the job. Not true at all. Uh, my lights, I actually go ahead and uh, hand lap in my heat sinks. And then, you know, it gives you a nice pressure. I don't, it's not actually, I guess technically it's not lapping, okay? So I hit it, I put it like a granite surface plate. You know, I got my granite surface plate over here. I put it like 800 grit sandpaper down that thing. I rub it in there for like five minutes or whatever it takes and, you know, make it a nice fresh clean, get all the machining marks off of it. You know, nice flat surface, flat earth surface, which really helps. This is kind of hard to do that, but anyways, you get the picture. Let's throw these screws back in there. I ramble a lot, guys. I'm so sorry. Ah! Magnetic tip would be nice, huh? So, and don't drop these guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> do not drop them. I'm gonna hold this upside down to get these screws started. I got that one. Yep, there's two. Awesome. So, and what you do is you just run these down to where they touch on both sides. Boom, it's touching. Now, you're gonna have to, eventually, we will end up moving these to get it centered in the reflector once it everything screws down we'll have to look at it see how it's centered inside there and then we'll have to take the thing back apart and loosen the screws up and nudge it one way or the other to get it just right as far as centering goes um so now we get to uh pre our leads here or contacts anyways and we uh we touch off right here yep always 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 clean your tip guys always clean the tip let me just get oh yeah you see my wire hanging there hopefully just touch a little bit and remember i've got the driver loose on the bottom side i don't want that to be in there yet rigid so anyways, we got our tip tinned up a little bit. We just touch that contact there and where we've already put the uh, flux on it. That solder just flows right down on there. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. That'll work. That'll work. So now we get a little bit more solder. And it just takes a little bit, guys. Don't overdo it with the solder. I'm going to go ahead and try to use these. And I'm going to have to set down for this, I believe. But uh, I'm going to try to use these copper tweezers. I'm gonna go ahead and throw 
or just a little bit more of this flux on there. On both sides, because I don't think that's pretty enough. It's all about the workmanship, guys. It's all about making it look as good as you can. You know, there's things to consider as far as, like, function over form. But in this case, it's going to function because I built it. You just have to make it look good. Yeah, that one was nice because I used it. Yeah, that was awesome. So I just sucked right in there. The capillaries are actioning. Nice, there it is. Beautiful, I'll take that. And then we'll go ahead and redo this one just because I don't think it looks as good as it could. Or should. Yeah, how about that? That worked. Yep. And then I, uh, I like to use uh, like a Q-tip with some alcohol. This one is rubbing alcohol. This is just rubbing alcohol. Squeeze out a little bit. These things are awesome. Um, you really, if you buy these bottles, you can get them on wherever, Amazon, eBay. Uh, make sure you buy a few of them because you're going to get a couple that just don't work. And there's nothing you'll ever be able to do to it to make it work. So, you know, they're only a couple bucks. You know, make sure you buy a couple just so that you got a spare. Use a Q-tip, get the flux off of there. Any excess trash and junk. See that? Oh, yeah. Gets it right off. Okay, so our LED is in place. Good enough. Yeah, I like it. It will hold. So, now we take our wires right here. I like to give it a little bit of a twist. And you really want to go, uh, let's see, it's uh, clockwise to tighten it. So, that's good practice when you put that thing in there. Spin it counterclockwise like that, just a little bit. And this helps, if, you know, this case here, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, but, say you're building a Convoy C8, or, uh, uh, sorry, ST Plus Triple. When you screw that light engine in, it will twists when, it, when the, the optic comes up and touches the o-ring on the head you gotta get that little extra snug that twist clockwise right to tighten it in just a fuzz more and that'll twist the wires so if you're twisting the wires this way when you're installing the driver doing it this way when you're installing the driver and then that little extra twist that you put on there it, it could cause major connection issues so always just kind of give it a little counterclockwise twist and push it down in there that's another thing hopefully this driver fits i did not test fit it uh, so that's okay though. we'll figure it out like I said, this is kind of impromptu, just off the cuff, just, uh, woke up, like, hey, I want to make a video on how to do a convoy. Yeah, so that's, uh, looking like it fits in there. Let me check it out here up close to my face so I see what's going on. Sorry, guys, just give me a second. Yeah, I believe that'll work. We will go ahead and try to reinsert the retaining ring. Now this is tricky. I might have to get it off away from the camera over here where I can see it. But I'm going to try to do it on the camera for you. And this is just another thing you have to deal with when you're dealing with these cheap lights. Sometimes they are a hassle. Oh, trade secrets, guys. Yep, trade secrets. I know. It's terrible. How dare I use nails? There we go. I'm holding the driver in with one finger with by the spring uh, just to keep it pressed down in its board where it needs to be when we're done here. And then just using the nail to spin this retaining ring around. It's coming a little tight there, so I'm probably going to have to cross up nails to get that thing screwed back down in there. run it down as far as I can anyway. Now I know guys, this isn't an anti-static mat. I don't have an anti-static wrist mount or thing. I don't, you know, depends on which school thought you uh, subscribe to. I, uh, I've heard people say things and not electronic ship drivers, and it wasn't, or, yeah, drivers and LEDs, and they weren't in anti-static cling bags, and they blew up as soon as I got them, I couldn't use them, guys, I've done hundreds, I'm not trying to pad my numbers, I've done hundreds of lights, I've never had a problem, as far as that kind of thing is concerned, so, I mean, do what you want, if you want to get all fancy and do that stuff, more power to you, I mean, you know, it's, it's just tragic that I'm not doing this in a hermetically sealed room, with, uh, human doctors on standby, you know, 
laboratory conditions. Do the best I can, guys. Okay, so we're getting there. It's snug. I would call that excellent. Yeah, I believe that'll do it. So we flip on our power supply, and she doesn't have to do this part. But I always like to check. Oops. So let's check it out. So jam the positive in there. Touch the ground. She's working. Awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff, guys. Awesome stuff. Alrighty. Turn off our power supply. Alright, I am gonna go ahead and try to crank that down just a little bit. Maybe that off the camera over here where I can really get a good look at it. Okay. We will see what happens. And if this turns out to be a bomb and not work, then uh, oops, we'll fix it. Just toss one of these cells in there, 18650 cells. Wow, half an hour. Whoa! Dang, gone that's bright. Love those FPLs. Super nice guys. We are not done yet. That's just the first half. Next we get to do the tail cap. And this has to be done, guys. This is not optional. You are gonna hurt somebody if you don't. With the FET driver, I don't care if it's just one LED. You're still pulling six amps with the XPLHI, and who knows how many with uh, the SST40 and um, the other you know, Osmond emitters that people are claiming are you know, kind of outrageous numbers. I mean, who knows how much power you're actually drawing off of that? You have to bypass these springs. It's not optional. Okay, so this will be a fun part. Hmm. Here, here. See how that works out for us. Now, I mean, you know, do what you want, guys. Um, not really my business, but uh, I personally will not send out a light with the switch on it. It's just not going to happen. And uh, so that's not going to work for this particular case. We're holding huge. Gotta figure it out. Um, so, anyways, let's go ahead and do this. Just got this little piece of aluminum. I use this a lot. So yeah, I, I don't like these switches at all, guys. These are trash. These are junk. Total, total trash. I don't even keep them. I just throw them away. They are knock off on 1288 switches. They're white. They will burn out faster. The plastic. Um, okay. My bad. I mean, there it is. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. The plastic is a different material. It will melt faster at a lower temperature. They are just total trash switches, guys. I don't send lights out with these switches. And this, I believe, is another contributing factor to my super low return rate for any kind of warranty issues or whatever. Not, not really trying to brag, but I kind of am. I mean, it's pretty awesome that, you know, I do a bunch of lights and rarely ever get one coming back to me. You know, let's be realistic. Like, this cheap convoy host makes an awesome flashlight, but it is a cheap host. These threads are not that great. These threads back here suck. Um, so, you know, you get a little bit of courage on this. You use this thing, beat it on it every day for a while, and after a year, year and a half, you know, you're probably going to end up having issues due to the host, whether the threads end up going on you. It, Curds up so bad inside here that uh, you know the threads don't make good contact anymore. Whatever the issue is, you know it's it's the host when there's an issue. In my experience with these, but you do get quite a while worth of a uh, good performance out of them. All right, so yeah, let's switch back to stainless. I guess my little babies in there, hang out with mom. Okay, there we go. Just like that, guys. If it takes any more than that, just touching it like I just did, you're doing something wrong. But it's not quite centered. Once again, we get back to workmanship, guys. It's got to be perfect. If it's not centered just right, then it's where it is. Oh, my. Somebody hurt that kid. <laughs> yeah. That's all it takes, guys. You just touch it. If it takes any more or any less, you're doing it wrong. That's good enough, you know, pretty close to perfect there. We'll call that good. Let's see my own. Nah. Yeah, it's not going to focus on that. Anyways, uh, bypassing springs. So let's get rid of this. And let's get a nice little vice back in here. I don't think we need these. We'll just clamp it lightly on the uh, switch. We don't need much pressure on it. That's it, just a little bit. Just enough to hold it. Because if you have to push on this, if you have to... Uh, force anything if it doesn't heat up like you think it should you're doing something wrong just stop reevaluate it's okay let's start with a fresh end so i just cut the end off of this wire get a little flux on it clean your tip get that stuff off there get the old stuff off you don't want to use old solder i really feel like i need a, uh, a hood or some kind of vent system and i'm probably gonna get something worked out in my department soon 
fresh air lamp. So, you know, let's just go ahead and cut that back off and just redo it. So, it's a fresh piece of wire right here. All right, what I'm going to do is try to feed it right here up underneath where the spring ends. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but right here there's a little gap where that spring ends where this wire is going to feed up underneath there. I'm going to do that from the inside. And then, this is kind of key too, right? you know, trade secrets here guys, check it out, watch. Roll this wire back up on that bottom coil. This way you won't have to rely on a solder connection. It'll be a nice solid mechanical connection there. The solder is just a, the band-aid holding it all together. Awesome. That's my uh, other pair of tweezers that I use all the time on shop. <laughs> but uh, like I said, this is impromptu. I didn't plan much of this in advance at all. I came out here this morning and thinking myself, you know, it'd be really cool if I did a video on how to build a Convoy C8. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I ramble a lot. I, I know that. I realize this, and I'm sorry. But I hope you guys get something from it. I mean, this is not optional, because what happens is when you're pulling a lot of power through, I, I mean, 6 amps times 4.2 volts, you know, it's 25 watts or so, whatever it comes out to be. You know, you, you really have to be conscious of how much power that is going through this little spring. I mean, think about it, guys. That's, that's a lot of power. For a tiny little spring, you have to do this. It will melt, I promise you. It might not do it right away, it might not do it for several years or something. I don't know. It might... And you know, some people may get lucky and it may never happen. They might use crappy cells, you know, but I like to use the good EFF cells that really put out some crank out the watts. You can't see that. I'm sorry. There we go. I don't know. It doesn't look as good as maybe somebody else that just does something a little different, but uh, guys, that's secure, that's safe, that's awesome. Function over form in this case. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that. That's beautiful. And that, if you, you just barely touch it, okay, you just get the tip wet, and you just barely touch it anymore, and you're feeding solder up that wire. And what that does is make that wire stiff in the middle. See right there where it bends now? That's awesome. That's what we're shooting for. If you have to sit here and feed the solder to that, you're just capillary action sucking the solder right up that wire, and it's going to make that wire super solid and stiff. And that's not a good thing at all, because when you put a battery in there and try to compress that spring, you know, with the battery or whatever, that wire is just going to dig into your battery. It's going to be bad all the way around. Welcome back to the shop, guys. Matt Strong here. Strong Lights Manufacturing. Strong Lights LLC. Uh, check out my website stronglights.com for uh, flashlight accessories. I haven't been able to put any flashlights for sale. I'm rambling Anyways, check it out guys part two. Uh, we're gonna just finish this up as, as quick as I can I've got I just uh, deleted one of 102 videos which had uh, Eight minutes worth of uh, film time that I'm hoping I'll get back out of that ah, Not cool. Okay. Cool. All right, so I always cut it high you know leave a little extra in there you want to push it down just a little bit and wrap this around the top coil like you see how uh, that spring that coil right there comes around I like to go back over here to the back side of it this way it doesn't scratch your battery up okay so like you want the top of the spring ah okay I'm sorry let me look at the camera you want the top of the spring right here to be the part that actually touches the battery but you need this on there you know as close to the top as possible so I like to put it right there and then wrap that around always wrap the coil that way it makes a nicer mechanical connection there instead of just the solder connection that could come loose when heated you know this way it'll almost be guaranteed to stay I've never never had an issue with a spring that was braided this way never um, so you can take it as you will do what you want uh, this is just what I do guys and this uh, does make a better light awesome see I just touched it did you see how fast that was I just barely touched it threw my flux on there just touched it flux soaked right in or the solder soaked right in beautiful that's really that's it that's all you need any more than that and you're just forcing the solder down that wire and making that wire stiff inside there and that's really not good so anyways we are good to put this thing back together guys i've got to get this done because i've only got so much time and my babies are calling i need to go see what they're up to This is a uh, left hand threads, guys. So,
like I said, this is an all-inclusive how-to video. I'm not going to make a list of everything that you need to get the job done. Sorry. I mean, if you need help, just shoot me a message. I'd you know, be glad to help you. But... Ah. And that's the thing with these cheaper lights. It's hard to keep the PCBs centered because they don't... The tolerances for the retaining ring are just... Not the greatest. Okay. That looks okay. What do you think? Yep. Looks good. Alright, like I said, this will be a giveaway light here eventually. Michael Fine donated this for us to enjoy. For me to build and all of us to enjoy. So, uh, I... Like I said, this was not rehearsed or pre-planned or anything i just woke up this morning like hey i want to build a flashlight 318650 in there works excellent awesome nice very nice okay so remember we don't have these screws tight we still have to center this thing which uh you know i'll go ahead and Snug them. And what you want to do is tighten this one, then tighten this one. Snug up this one, then this one. Just a, a little bit, like, uh, let's see here. Yep, not even a quarter of a turn. Go back and forth, back and forth. Because if you just tighten this one, it'll cause that PCB to get jacked up on the other side. And then you got to force it down with this one. It ends up bowing the PCB, which is on a level that you'll never actually see. But, uh, yeah, just go back and forth, you know, until they're snugged up pretty good. Doesn't, doesn't have to be, none of these tiny screws, the 440 screws, the 256s, none of these actually get cranked down tight, ever. Oh, um, nine, three, seven, nine. Yeah. Telemarketer. So, anyways, we got that as close to centered in there as possible. Now we'll, uh, we'll see what it looks like when you throw the, uh, reflector and bezel on there but I need to find there it is excellent 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 we'll try to use this guys this uh, centering ring and these are a lot of the time they're more of a pain in the butt than they're worth and they actually hurt the output depending on which light you're building some lights it's better not to have this um, yeah I'm pretty sure the C8 was one of them so I'm not going to use that. It it helps uh, with the uh, throw if you don't use that. Getting that LED farther up inside the reflector keeps that light. You know, it, it helps, guys. It helps. Uh, Actually, that's centered up fairly okay right there. 